your Bible, turn in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah chapter 58. If you'll turn there, please. Chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 58. Did I turn it off? Let me, let me, let me make sure that I'm, it's not me. Okay. It was on, I guess. And then I, okay. Isaiah chapter 58. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for another privilege to come into your presence, Lord. We thank you for the outpouring of your glory in this house, Lord. Father, we ask you in Jesus' name that you will Use us today as an oracle of thine, Lord. We bind the works of the enemy, Satan. We bind you. We bind every spirit that would try to hinder the word of God. We bind you in chains that cannot be broken. We shut the mouths of the wicked. And, Lord, right now we ask in Jesus' name for sufficient angels to assist us in the ministry of the word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Isaiah 58, and we're going to start at the first verse. It says, Cry loud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me ordinances of justice they take delight in approaching of God, in the approaching of God. Wherefore have we fasted, says they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. To smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast? And an acceptable day of the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and, do, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Verse 8 says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall break forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer, thou, shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking of vanity. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And may his word be food to our souls. I want to talk today about the chosen fast. We talked about hunger and thirsting last week. And we talked about measuring your thirst measures, praise God, how much of God you desire and how much of God you will receive. There are different levels in God. There's different levels of the anointing. There's different levels of the glory of God. There's different levels of the presence of God. And so how much of God's presence or God's glory or God's anointing is predicated upon your thirst? Jesus said, he that thirsts, let him come to the waters and drink. He said, he that believeth on me, the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. God wants to know that you're thirsty. The reason that, and I want to talk about fasting today because the, I want to give you some, 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 uh, uh, some, some scriptural foundations for what we're doing. And also, I want you to be able to receive the full benefits of fasting. Fasting, praise God, it's almost been a lost art 
It's almost been a lost function. Fasting, praise God, we need to understand its purpose. We need to understand, praise God, uh, it's, uh, what it produces. And so one of the things that God does when he wants to cause us to be able to walk in another level of glory or anointing, many times what he will deal with, he'll deal with our thirst. The reason we fast and do it every year, of course, we know, praise God, that Israel fasted every year. Once a year, they fasted, uh, uh, praise God. And, and uh, the Day of Atonement was a fast day. And so fasting is all through the Old Testament and is also in the New Testament. And there is no certain guidelines that's given for fasting, but we find out, praise God, that it is, uh, 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 it is something, uh, uh, an activity that we should do because what it does, it deals with our thirst, it deals with our flesh, it deals with our desires, and many times the only way that certain things will be destroyed in your life is that you will have to starve them because as you when you eat natural food you feed your flesh the spiritual food the spiritual bread is the word of god and so praise god and just think about it is that if when you fast you are you are uh, 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 you are limiting your intake of natural food for the, the, for the intake of more spiritual food, more of the word of God, more of prayer, more, uh, praise God, of seeking God, more of worshiping God. And so we fast every year because it gives us an opportunity to reset. Somebody say reset. reset. Have you ever reset your computer? Have you ever had to, to reset your computer because it started acting up? Have you ever had to reboot your phone? You had so many apps up on your phone until your phone was acting crazy. I was in my car the, uh, uh, the other day, and I'm driving, and, you know, I got the, the voice, you know, for the phone. So I'll say, call. I'll push the button, and it'll say, you know, for me to tell, uh, to tell them what I, I want, and I'll say, I'll say, call Joyce Hogan. I, I, so, you know, and it'll call Joyce Hogan. I can say, call Living Bread Ministries. It'll call Living Bread Ministries. So I got in my car, I'm driving, and I said, call, and I, I can't remember who I said to call. It was like I said, call Joyce Hogan, and it was say, and, and it came up uh, uh, Higginbotham. I, and then I tried to call somebody else. I said, call Living Bread Church, and, and, and it come up with a whole different name. I mean, it was acting crazy. It's because, praise God, as you go along, praise God, with all of the input that goes into those computers and stuff in the car and in whatever, it's so much input that goes into them, so many apps that's, that's, that's functioning into them, sometimes they get all crossed up. I had to wait until I could get to some place to cut the car off and cut it back on. The reason is that I needed a reset. And so fasting uh, will give us an opportunity to reset, to refresh, to renew, to restore, to revive. How many wants a re-up? <laughs> now, that's a bad word when you're talking to the army. You know, my, my, my brothers went to the army. I never went to the army. They were talking about, you know, some of my friends were re up. I said, what do you mean re up? They mean they're re-enlisting. And so, <laughs> so we need to understand that fasting gives us an opportunity. And we, not, we need not be locked in to just fasting on our annual fast times. You need to fast yourself. You need to have some fast days yourself. I came up in the church of God in Christ, the grand old church. And in the grand old church of God in Christ, every Tuesday and every Friday were fast days. You fasted every Tuesday and you fasted every Friday. If you didn't, you felt like you wasn't saved on Sunday. That's, I just threw that in there. But what I want you to understand is, is that Bishop Mason understood that not only do you need to get saved, baptized, 
and filled with the Holy Ghost, but you need constant refilling. How many remember in the, in the, I believe it's the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, they had already been filled with the Holy Ghost, but the threatenings of the enemy against them, the, 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 the uh, Pharisees and the, and the Sanhedrin, and the Bible says that they took them and they questioned them. And when they had threatened them, they sent them back to their company. And the Bible says when they got back, he says that they prayed and they asked God to release a new anointing, a greater anointing with signs and wonders and miracles. And the Bible says, praise God, that they, uh, that they were filled again with the Holy Ghost and they spoke with boldness and God did signs and wonders. How many know every now and then we need another filling? Come on, somebody know, how, how many know, how many ever got a second helping? The other day, Sister Hogan made some soup. And I always tell, I said, now, make the soup real watery. I said, because your soup is stew. Y'all know what stew is? Stew is a, it's thick, ain't it? And, uh, and so she made me some soup. And, I, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm eating the soup. And the soup was so good. I said, honey, this is good. It's some good soup. I said, I think I want another. Give me another bowl of that soup. <laughs> Have you ever asked for a second helping? You need a second, we need a second helping of the Holy Ghost. We need a second helping of the word. Because we want the double portion. Well, if you want a double portion, eat a double portion. Eat more. More of his word. More of what he's, uh, more of prayer. More of supplication. So fasting gives us an opportunity to reset. And so we do this every year. I thank God for prophetess uh, uh, Thomas uh, Prophetess Yvonne and uh, praise God for her bringing the fast at the end of the year because we will do that from now on because the Lord has already shown me. He said, look, I want you to finish strong and then I want you to begin strong. He said, I'm going to do something at the end of the year and then I'm going to do something at the beginning of the year also. He said, but I don't want you to just wait until the beginning of the year. You know, we're waiting to make all our New Year's uh, restitutions and resolutions and, and, and uh, you know, and so on. But what we're doing is we're finishing strong and then we we're moving into the new year, praise God, with strength and blessing. Now, in Isaiah 58, let me get to our text. And Isaiah 58 speaks to us concerning, uh, uh, God is speaking to Israel concerning their fast. And what Isaiah was dealing with was that they were fasting, but they were not getting the benefits of their fast. It's one thing, praise God, but now if I'm not going to eat, if, I'm, if my stomach is going to be growling in the middle of the night, I want something out of this. I mean, if I'm going to be turning over the greens and the, and the fried chicken, I've been not talking about that too much. Somebody be didn't broke their fast. But the thing is, is that if I'm going to give this up, there must be some benefits to me not eating. God don't just want you hungry. He has a purpose for the fast. And so they're fasting, but if you, if you, if you see here, it says here that uh, in verse 2, yet they seek me daily, delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of God. They ask of me ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Look at verse 3. It says, wherefore have ye fa we fasted? They're telling God, why have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest us not. You mean we fasting and God, you ain't even recognize it? And then it goes on to say, that fasting, you see us not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? In other words, God, you ain't recognized. We, we didn't stop eating. We didn't got hungry. We afflicted ourselves in this fast. We, you ain't listening to us. You ain't acknowledging us. And then it says, Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure 
exact all your labors. In the, in the, in the Amplified translation, it says, you, it says, it says in verse 3, let me look at the, am I in verse 3? Oh, I'm in verse 3. Excuse me. <laughs> it says, on the day of your fast, this is the Amplified translation, when you should be grieving for your sins, is anybody in here? You find profit in the business, and instead of stopping all work, as the law implies you, your workmen should do, you extort from your hired servants a full amount of labor. In other words, you fasting, but you're fasting, you're using the fast as a, as a business proposition. You're using the fast, and you have not stopped working. In other words, praise God, you're doing the same thing that you did before you fast. You have not been grieving for your sins in the past. See, when we fast, we should be allowing God to deal with our sins, dealing with our, our issues. As I told you to, that, praise God, that God wants us to deal with our issues this first three months of the year. God is, has spoken that prophetically. In other words, this is an opportunity for you to get rid of your stuff, for you to deal with your secret sins. Amen? For you to deal with your shortcomings, for you to get rid of your bad temper. Oh, glory to God. For you, praise God, to allow God to do something on the inside of you, to cleanse you, to deliver you. So fasting, so he's saying you fasted, but you didn't fast for the right reasons. Jesus made it very clear. He said, when you fast, not if you fast. He assumed that you were fasting. Somebody said, he didn't never told us to fast. He said, when you fast. You know what that, in, you know what that insinuates? That he, that he expected you to be fasting, didn't he? He said, don't fast like the heathen fast. Don't fast to show off. Some folks fast to show off. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with call, we're calling a public fast. Most of my fasting is done, and I, and, I, and I prefer fasting when nobody knows I'm fasting. Because I learned that from, my, from the word, scripture from, and from my father. My father said, you know, when you fast, you know, Jesus said, when you fast, don't fast like the heathen fast or like the Pharisees fast. Because when they fast, they don't wash their face, don't comb their hair. They want folk to know they fasting. Uh, they want to know, I mean, and uh, so, so they, they make a big to-do out of their fast. And so we know that there's public fasts. We're fasting together, so we're talking about fasting. But what he was saying is that if you're fasting to get uh, recognition or to show that you, so, uh, you have so much piety, you, you, you're so spiritual, you know, you have to be careful because the reason you're fasting is you're fasting uh, uh, your natural food for, for spiritual food, and you're also fasting so that God, the, the, the God of heaven, can do something spiritual in your life. You want your spiritual life to grow and your natural, physical, carnal life to be put to death. And so you shouldn't be doing it so everybody will see you. And Jesus said, so don't be like the heathen when they fast. They don't wash their face. He said, but wash your face anoint your head with oil. In other words, don't look like you're fasting. You know, I, I remember hearing a preacher say he was running a revival at a, at a church and praise God and and God had told him what he was going to do in the meeting. He was running a revival. God had told him what he was going to do, and he was moving in that. He said, but the, but the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, 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 the first lady of the church, she, she was fasting. There was nothing wrong with her fasting. He said, but, he said, but we have to be very careful that we don't fast so folk will, will, will see us. And he said, so, so uh, 
He said, so God was, started moving in there. He said, God had told him how he went with the healing and the miracle. He starts, that God started moving, and she would stand up every uh, week and say, because the, 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 those revivals went you know, sometimes a, a whole month. I know y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all, if we said a, a revival for three days, we get one, two people. Uh, let me get off of that. And he said, but she would stand up and say, I'm on the fourth day of my fast. That's why God is moving in here. And then she would get up the next Sunday. I'm on the eighth day of my fast. I'm on the 14th day of my fast. The, the fasting is not so you can be seen. Fasting is so God can be seen. So you can decrease so he can increase. Is anybody in here? So we want the benefit of this fast. We want to come out of this fast receiving all of the benefits of this fast. I ain't going hungry and coming out of here with the same level of anointing that I had when I went in. Let's look at Isaiah 58 again and let's extract from here some of the wonderful benefits of fasting. Verse number 6 says, Is not this the fast? Well, let me read five, and then I'm going to read six. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? See, when you, when you, when you, I'm going to tell you something. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. Let me tell you something. When you stop eating food, your mind, your will, and your emotions is going all crazy. You're afflicting your soul because your soul is saying, look, you got a whole chicken in the refrigerator. Okay, let me, your mind is telling you one piece, just one wing. Okay, let me get back to this. It's not the fast that you, to afflict your soul. Is it not to bow down thy head as a bull? In other words, it's to humble you. That means to bow down, humble yourself. That's what fasting does. The Bible says he humbled himself with fasting. Fasting will take pride out of you. And, and some of us, we proud to be saved. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God hates pride. Hates pride. Somebody said, I'm proud, I'm humble. That's, oxy, that's, a, that's a contradiction, ain't it? I'm so proud, I'm humble. <laughs> to bow thy head into, as a bulrush to spread sackcloth and ashes under thee. Will I call this a fast and acceptable day of the Lord? Look at verse 6. Is this not the fast which I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden, to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? So the benefits of fasting, when we fast correctly, like Jesus said, not for show we're fasting because we're limiting our flesh and all of the appetites of the flesh and we're building an appetite for spiritual things we're building an appetite for the word of god we're building an appetite for the spirit and the holy ghost and so god is diminishing our flesh he's building our spirits so when we fast it is a powerful, powerful spiritual weapon in the kingdom of God. Number one point that I want to make is that it says that the fast, the chosen fast that God has chosen, that God has designated, one of the first things that it will do, it will loose the bands of wickedness. Somebody say loose. The bands of wickedness. Wow. In, 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 uh, in the book of, of St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Mark 9 and 28 and 29. And when he was coming to the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? 
And he said unto them, This kind cometh forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. In other words, this is the incident in which the man brought his son that was bound with a demon and brought them to his disciples, and the disciples could not cast the devil out. But the Bible says that when Jesus came in, the man says, if you can help me, uh, Lord, and, and Jesus said to the man to believe, and he cast the devil out of the boy. The disciples came to him later and said, why couldn't we cast them out? Now, you know, why couldn't we cast them out? And Jesus says, well, in one, uh, trans in one, in Matthew, it says, it's because of your unbelief. But here it says that this kind, insinuating that this kind of unbelief, this kind of demon cannot be cast out except by fasting and prayer. In other words, y'all been eating too many hamburgers. You've been eating too many hot dogs. This kind comes out by turning over your plate and passing by churches and Popeyes and Mickey D's and the Big King Burger and Wendy's. And somebody said, don't forget Wendy's. Because let me tell you something, it takes something to turn over your plate. You may think you're strong. You may think you got control over your flesh. The first day of your fast, your stomach will be saying, feed me. But if you're going to get the power over your flesh, you're going to have to subdue your, your, your carnal desires, your carnal thirst, your carnal, carnal appetites. You're going to have to let God do a work in your life. Jesus said this kind comes out by but fasting and prayer. So one of the first things that you got to know is that when you fast, you can have an expectation, scriptural expectation, to be loose from the bands of wickedness. How many want to be loose from the bands of wickedness? See, uh, the, 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 um, there are certain levels of wickedness and levels of bondage that cannot be broken but through the crucifixion of the flesh and the humbling of your flesh. In Isaiah, again, in Isaiah 58, In, in, in it talks about the fast to loose the bands of wickedness. That loose there, that word loose means to, to loosen, to break forth, to let go free, to loose, to be set free, to put off, to ungird, to unstop. In other words, praise God, there, there, when you come out of this fast, there should be some things that you went in the fast with that when you come out, you are no longer bound by those things. I ain't going through no fast, come out, and I'm the same way I was when I went in. All I did is I just lost a few pounds. It, the, the, the benefits of this fast is to loose the bands of wickedness. Wickedness in your life, sins in your life, wickedness in your life. In other words, praise God, when you fast, you're, you're, you're starving your flesh and the spirit is being strengthened. The, the Bible talks about uh, the, the spirit being willing, but the flesh is weak. So how do you get the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak? So how do you get the spirit to move, the spirit to be pronounced, the spirit to flow? Is that you deal with your flesh. Is anybody in here? An amen or two will help. 
me to feel like y'all here. Okay? The next thing is, is so it looses. The Bible talks about loosing. So you will be loose when you come out. So expect to be loose from your wickedness. The second thing is, it says it will undo the heavy burden. Now, some things you've done, you need to undo. <laughs> In other words, you need some things to be undone that's been done. Is anybody in here? So, that it will undo some things that you have done. I believe that this is like a spiritual reprieve. It's like a spiritual uh, 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 exoner it exonerates you for the things that you've done. So some things we have done, we don't realize that every sin carries with it a consequence. Every sin carries with it a bondage. Every sin carries with it a demon. Some people don't believe that, but the Bible says that when, when Cain, in the book, Cain killed his brother Abel, and the Bible says when God came to Cain, he said to Cain, he said, Cain, if you had done well, I would have approved your, your, your sacrifice. He said, but if you will not, if you will not do well, Satan lies at the door. In some trans, if you read it in the original trans, it says Satan, like a demon, is waiting at the door. Sin, Satan, there's demons that are attached to sin. So many times when you do stuff, sometimes we think we just done it and we don't realize that, praise God, we picked up some stuff. We picked up a demon somewhere. We picked up a habit somewhere. We picked up a vice somewhere. And God, the fast, will help you to undo what you done done. I know that's not good English. But ever, whatever you done done, God will undone. So you need to understand that I need something. I know some things that I that that I that I have done, praise God, that 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 caused something to be stuck to me. Some things you do, praise God. You know, uh, I, you know the, the Bible says that 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 he that is joined uh, to a harlot becomes one. They become one with that harlot. And you'll be carrying them demons around. I heard one, and, and I'm, not, I'm not advocating for this, but, I'm, but I've heard this from, said that every person that you sleep with is connected to your soul. Sometimes that's why folk can't be married to one person. Because they ain't never been set free from all the other persons that they've been with. God meant for us to, that's why God said that we should be, we should have one wife and we should be married and we should be virgins and so on and so forth. I thank God that, Sister Hogan, I thank God I'm the only one. Take a lot of pressure off you. Go ahead, let me. <laughs> okay. So you need some things undone. You need to be undone that you've done. This is a way that you can get it, you can get it undone. So, so, so we want God to undo some things today. How many want God to undo some things? Lord, I need you to undo some things. And then some folks say, well, you know, I, I ain't never done anything. But let me tell you something. If you've been bound and you've been bound by the lust of the eye, the Bible says he that looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed it already in his heart. Some of us may not have committed physical fornication, but we've committed spiritual fornication. That's why, that's why Job said, I put a, a, a guard over my eyes. I will not look upon a woman. Oh, it's quiet in here. 
lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. And so you need God to undo some things. Oh, yeah, I gave my life to the Lord. You need to come. Say, Lord, undo everything that the devil has put on me as the things that I have done. Lord, I repent, and I ask you to undone some things. Undo the heavy burden. The, the, Greek, the, the uh, Greek word for there is, is natar, to undo, natar. It means to jump. It means violently agitate. It means to terrify, shake off, untie, drive asunder, leap, let loose, move, undo, unfasten, set free. And some of y'all need to violently agitate those things. In other words, you, you got you, you to gotta, you gotta break from them before you can get rid of them. And then you need to shake off some things. How many of you know many of us during this fast, I'm shaking off some stuff. And then it says, praise God, that, that, that shake off, untie. Sometimes sometime we need to be untied from some old stuff. When I talked about how the Lord delivered me from, from, from smoking and from alcohol, uh, you know, and my, little, and my little reefer, you know, because that's what we called it then. You know, now y'all got blunts. I know. My son told me about him. <laughs> God's got to deliver you many times. You can't deliver yourself, but you can if you want God to do something in your life. Many times you got to show God you really mean business. My father said, many times my father, when we would get in a crisis, he said, I got to turn my plate over. I knew what that meant. It meant I got to fast. I got to get a hold to God because I need to be untied from some things. I need some things to be driven asunder. I need some things to move out of my life. I need some things to be unfastened. I need to be set free. Fasting will loose the bands of wickedness. It will undo the heavy burden. The next thing it says, and it, it will let the oppressed go free. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. In the fourth chapter, of the, and we're not going to go there for time's sake, in the book of St. Luke, the fourth chapter, the first, the second verse, the 14th, the 18th verse, uh, praise God, it talks about the fact, in the first verse, it talks about that Jesus came out of the wilderness. In the second verse, it says that he came out of the wilderness. He had been in the wilderness 40 days fasting and praying. He had not ate in 40 days. And the Bible says that he came in. Now, if you go down to, praise God, to the 20, to the 18th verse, that's the one we're most familiar with when Jesus stood up in the temple and took the book of Isaiah and opened it up and read from Isaiah 60 when he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to, to the recovering of sight to the blind. He, he said to, 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 to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, the day of deliverance, the day of victory, the day of release, I've come to preach, but he did it after he had fasted 40 days the fast prepared him Jesus was the son of God if anybody didn't need to fast it was the son of God but, but he came in human form he came in the likeness of sinful flesh and he gave us an example of how to walk in the power of God and it was through the fasting 40 days and 40 nights that he came back and declared that the spirit of the Lord is upon me he has anointed me. How many want to be anointed? You don't get this by eating everything, by feeding your flesh, by not sacrificing. Let me tell you something. The anointing will cost you something. It will cost you something. I was reading, I was, I was reading one of the generals of, you know, uh, of the healing move of the healing ministry and movement years ago. Some of you may have may remember A. A. Allen. He was a healing minister. And I was reading because during the fast, sometimes what I'll do is I'll I'll try to feed myself with some I ain't gonna watch all television. 
get on my computer, go on and look at some of the, 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 the moves of God and so on. And so I was looking, and, and, and just so happened, I turned, and I never had been able to get this one before. I had heard of it, but he, it said um, uh, 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 the price, I think it was the price of God's miracle-working power in my life. And he talks about, he said that he, as he had given his life to the Lord, and he said, and then eventually he became a pastor of a church. And he said, but he noticed that Jesus healed the sick, cast out devils, did miracles. And he was wondering, what in the, why in the world? Lord, I see it in your Bible. I know your Bible is true. You said in my name they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They would heal the sick. They would raise the dead. And here it is. We're not having any of this. See, it's something about thirsty. He said, and I wanted the power of God. He said, so I would tell my wife. He said, I would tell her. I said, I'm going into a fast. And I'm going in this fast. And I'm going in this room. And I ain't coming out. Until I know that I got, that the power of God, God has released the power of God, and for miracles, I'm not coming out. And he said he would go in, his, in, in, the, in, the, in the bedroom and go into the, this closet. He went in a closet. He said, and he said, he'd go in there, he said, and then he, he said his wife would be cooking out there, and he smelled the food. He said, mm. he said, next thing you know, he said he'd be back out there sitting at the table <laughs> And he said, but he said, he said, but I, 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 he said, God, he said, you know, I want, and he said, so he told his wife, he said, the last time he said, I told her, I said, I'm going in here. I'm locking myself in. You lock the door behind me. I'm staying in here until God gives me the power that he says about in this word. And he said, he goes into, he goes into the, to the closet and he's in there and, and so on. He says, and, uh, and she's in there cooking. He said she was kicking beef stew. He said the beef stew was coming under the, under the bedroom door and coming in there. <laughs> he said, he said, next thing you know, he was out of the closet sitting there at the table. His wife said, I thought you was going to be back. He said, and he said, he said, and so he said he picked the first forkful of roast beef and put it in his mouth. He said, and God spoke to him. And he said to him, he said, until you want my power more than you want this beef stew, you will not receive my power. He said he reached in his mouth and took the stew out of his mouth and put it down and went in the closet. He said, I stayed in that closet. He said, I don't know whether it was it was." A week, a year, he said, I was in that closet until I forgot all about time. He said, and I stayed in that closet before God fasting, not eating, because I wanted the power of God. He said, and all of a sudden, he said, that room lit up. He said, and Jesus walked in the room. And Jesus said to him, there are 13 things that you will have to do before you'll be able to walk in the power of God. 13 things. I don't know what your cross is. I know what mine is. And if you don't bear your cross and follow Jesus, you'll never walk in the power of God. And he said, he, when, and Jesus, he said it lit up. He said, and while he was in the closet, he said, he said, he had, he got an old pencil. He said, and he said it didn't even have a lead on it. He bit off the, and he said, and there was a box in there that he was, he was kneeling by an old box. And he said, he, he wrote down. He said, Lord, say it again so that I can write them down. And he wrote down the 13 things that God told him he had to do before he could walk in the power. I had never heard the testimony before. I had heard about it. And he said something interesting. He said, I went, came out, went back to my church. I'm still preaching and so on. He said, and, and him and his wife both, they're marking off stuff. I got rid of that. Mm. And they're marking off. He said it was 13 years before he got rid of everything. Whew. Look at somebody and say, if you want the anointing, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some meals. 
It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some prayer. It's going to cost you some, it's going to cost you some denying of yourself. I don't know if anybody's here is hearing this message today. It, he, he said, and when they got to the last thing, the last thing, he said they got it, and they conquered that and crossed that out. He said, and God said, now. And, and, and if you look at some of his, some of the videos, you will see people that had blinded eyes can't see nothing. And God healing them instantly. Folk on cancer, laying in cancer beds. Tumors drying up. Because somebody was willing to pay the price. Somebody was willing to deny themselves. We can, if we're going to benefit the world, we cannot be like the world. If we're going to benefit humanity, we got to be willing to sacrifice. It can't be all about us. And I'll never forget it. When I, and, and I, I, it was just this week that the Lord, because I, I went on and that was the first thing that popped up. And I, and I, and I kind of knew the Lord was dealing with me about another level. But when you want another, let me tell you something. Every level, with every another level, there is another devil. You're going to have to deal with some high-level devils. Let me finish this message. I'm almost done. He said that he would undo the heavy burden. He would let the oppressed go free. The oppressed. He said go free. To be exempt from bondage. That's what the... the, the uh, the uh, uh, Greek word for go free, exempt from bondage, liberated from slavery. Whatever has been enslaving you, God will liberate you from it through a time of fasting. It's not the fast, it's the obedience. Number four says in verse 6 it says undo the heavy burden let the oppressed go free and it says and that ye break every yoke somebody say break every yoke the, 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 the action word in there the operative word is every break every yoke when we come off this fast let me tell you something. There is no yoke that God cannot break when you humble yourself with fasting. There is not a demon that can remain and stands if you will not, if, when you humble yourself with fasting. And so he said he will break every yoke. What are you bound with? What is oppressing you? What is depressing you? What has you under bondage? Through humbling yourself before God and fasting, God can destroy every yoke. Don't look at it as just a fast, just something you're doing. Look at it for the benefit. Lord, when I come out of this fast, I want to come out and I want every yoke that's been around my neck, everything that's had me bound, everything that's had me shackled, I want it to be broken over my life. Thank you, Jesus. Every yoke. Somebody say every yoke. That word natal, it means to tear off, to break off, to burst, to lift up, to pull off, to pull out, and to root out. In other words, the yoke will be broken off. The yoke will be busted, burst. The yoke will be lifted up off of you. The, the yoke will, will be pulled off. The yoke will be rooted out. In other words, praise God, the fast is to allow God to get rid of everything that has had you attached to it, bound to it. I don't know about you, but I'm coming on out of some yokes, 
Sometimes you need to be, some things need to be broken off. Some old relationship yoke need to be broken off. Some old situations that you've been bound to, some old habits that you've been bound to need to be broken off. So, Lord, I'm not in here just, just starving myself for nothing. I'm coming out of here, and I mean everything that I've been bound to, everything that I've been shackled to. I'm coming out, praise God, and I'm coming out set free from everything that has had me bound. Thank you, Jesus. Break every yoke, every yoke. That word stood out to me every, every, every. And like the Lord was saying, every. Every. Say, well, you don't know what I'm dealing with. Every. You, you, you don't know how much I love him. Every. You don't know how much I needed that money that I stole. Every. Every yoke. Break. Can you imagine that? That should, be, that should be something that should lift us up and give us faith. Is your yoke sickness? Is your yoke disease? Is your yoke lust? Is your yoke poverty? Is your yoke, uh, 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 well, any yoke. Is your yoke depression, oppression, rejection? Whatever it is, it can be broken when you fast. I don't know about you, but I, I'm looking for everything that the devil has put on me. Every yoke that's been in my life. Ooh, I, I, you know, when you can find something that works for everything. Have you ever found some, you know, of course my, my parents thought that, that castor oil, cod liver oil, Father John's could almost heal anything. My father thought that same and salve was the remedy to every major disease classification. <laughs> I remember my brother, my, my brother, my brother Sloan, my, 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 my sister is getting ready to go to Memphis and they're cooking chicken, fried chicken on the stove for, because, you know, they're going to take, you know, when you drive down, you're eating. Y'all know how, you know how we do. We ain't fasting when we're going down there. We're eating. <laughs> so she's, so they're cooking the chicken and, my, and, and the clock is wrong. Over the, oh, the clock is over the stove on the wall. And my brother Sloan goes up, and, and he gets up on a chair trying to do the clock, slips and falls, and hits the hot grease hits him. He has second and third degree burns on his body. My daddy... <laughs> When it, when the, 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 I know I ain't going to hell because I didn't seen somebody reacting to a hell experience. Because when that, that, that grease hit him, he took off running, screaming all the way through the house. And I'll never forget it. My father, he, he, he you know, uh, he, he, he calms him, tries to calm him down. He says, oh boy, since, since we're, <laughs> I want y'all to go to the store and get some salmon salve. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. And Dad gets salmon salve. Now, it is, it is a point with this, this story. I'll get to it. <laughs> he takes, he takes, uh, baking soda with cold, with cold water and put it on and it did soothe it. But then he, then he, after he gets it all soothed, then he puts same and salve and then sits and then he has him up in the bed. My mother was gone. She was gone. I, I think her and some of my older sisters was gone. Child. When she got home, she got home and, and, her, and, and, and heard what had happened and went up and looked at Sloan and my mother said, Let's get this boy to the hospital. <laughs> My father, I'm telling you, he had the remedies was the same and salve, iodine, what you I mean, these were everything, you know, and, and then really, if you really was having problems, take a bath. <laughs> let me get to <laughs> But let me get to can you imagine something that can be used? To heal everything. 
break every yoke? Well, I'm yoked with sickness. You mean every yoke? My Lord. That means the devil has got to loose you. The thing has got to go because you have put yourself on the altar. You have humbled yourself before God. You've humbled yourself with fasting. And now God is intervening in your situation. Thank you, Jesus. Let me close. So when we come out of this fast, I hope you wrote these four things down. At least these four things you should expect. At least these four things. Loose the bands of wickedness. Undo. Let the oppressed go free. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10.38. And to break every yoke. And I can tell you by experience, as a young believer, when I got saved at 17, I was, you know, God delivered me from some things, but some things didn't leave. You know, I still was bound with my lust. You know, I had to ask God, help me, especially in the summertime. I think that was just when hot pants came out. I said, devil, you, you, Lord, you got to help me. Okay. <laughs> Destroy this yoke. <laughs> See, I wasn't married then, of course. I wasn't married. And, and, uh, but I was having problems committing fornication of the eye. Because he said, if you look on a woman... But that, but I, and, and I, I, I used to go in and fast and go into the church myself. I'd shed in the church. I said, Lord, if you don't do something, now something's going to happen around here. I ain't going to be saved long. Because back then, you know, now, you know, folk do everything, they still say. And I'm not saying they're not saved because I'm, I, I know we've, we've come a long way in our understanding of the word of God. But back then, you did one sin. You, 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 you wasn't saved no more. So if you really wanted to be saved, you had to do fast, pray, do whatever you had to do. You had to do whatever you had to do to get rid of them things. Destroy every yoke. Now, let me, do, let me just close with this. Somebody say, then. Come on, say that again. Then. I want you to, to, to look. It says in verse 9, because it says that if you fast this way, you're going to see these four things happen in your life. And then it says in the ninth verse, then. The first word, then. I want you to remember this, then. Well, what does it mean? It means after you have fasted, after you have put your, humbled yourself in fasting, and done all those things, then. You know, he, 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 didn't, he breaks the yoke over your life. He, he undoes the heavy burden. Then, then look what it says. It says, then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. You mean to tell me that fasting will cause answered prayer to be manifest in your life? That means that, that your prayer life will change when you learn the virtue, the power of fasting. It says that then shall thy... Well, well, actually, it says, let me read it in verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth, as in the morning. Thy health, in other words, God going to give you your health back. Your health shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness, in other words, God going to give you an ability to live right. Thy righteousness shall be go before thee. And then let me, and then what? The glory. Somebody say the glory. See, I started at nine, but I went to move it. I went to start. Then you're going to walk in the glory. Folk trying to walk in glory, and they've not ever paid a price. It's more than just lifting your hands and singing a, 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 a worship song. But it tells you that after you have fasted, 
All of these wonderful things happen as a result of the fast, and then all of, and now, praise God, then, praise God, you, you find yourself, praise God, breaking your, your light. Light represents revelation, represents, praise God, understanding. There's a new revelation shall break forth in the morning. Thy health, the health and the strength of thy, thy body, the health of thy spiritual health shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. You'll begin to be able to live right where you couldn't live right before, to live in a way that you couldn't live before, and shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear reward. How many want the glory of the Lord on up? How many want to carry the glory? Just walk in the glory is like a, like a blanket over you. You don't get there overnight. Somebody told somebody, I want your anointing, apostle. Get your own. I'm using mine right now. Don't depend on every, don't depend on a preacher on an apostle, a prophet, on a pastor. God bless you. Honor them, respect them, and receive from them, but don't depend solely on them for your, uh, for, for your relationship with God and for the anointing upon your life. God can anoint you. God wants to use you. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9 says, Then shall thy call See, your health then broke forth. You're righteous now. You, you're healthy now. Healthy spiritually, physically, mentally. Your depression is gone. You're living in righteousness. The glory of the Lord is on you. And then verse 9 says, and then, say then, shall thou call. After that, you're going to call on the Lord. You, you haven't, in other words, God says, y'all been fast and wrong. That's why y'all ain't heard. I ain't heard from y'all, and y'all ain't heard from me. But when you fast right, you're going to call, and I'm going to answer you. Woo. The Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. Woo. Glory to God. In other words, you, you're going to pray, and your prayers are going to be answered. But also, when you cry, you're going to realize his presence. He, he didn't, when you cry, it's not talking about an answer to prayer. It's talking about him showing up himself. He said, then I'll say, here he is. You'll be in trouble and you'll call and God will say, I'm right here with you. You'll be in a situation, praise God, and God said, I'm working a miracle. And I, I didn't sit in the miracle. I came myself. Isn't it wonderful to know God will come himself? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you that you might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. Mm, mm, mm. I said, Lord, that, and, and see, God showed up in, up in, in, in A.A. Allen's room. I remember we were on a 30-day fast at, at the, when my, my, my mother and father-in-law was pastoring, Sister Hogan and myself were, were, were ministers there, and praise God, and we were on a 30-day consecration of fasting. I'm trying to relift your faith. I'm trying to get your faith up there so you can get some. You can't get it unless you get this by faith. Amen? And I'll never forget it. We were, we were praying and fasting, and we were going to the church every day uh, in the morning and then in the evening. We would go in the morning to pray, and then we would come back in the evening. And I remember one, we were there in the evening one, and all of a sudden, praise God, while we we're fasting, the, 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 the wave of God's spirit went through, and I was sitting on the front pew, and I was sitting there, and the power of God came across and knocked me over, and I was locked out on the pew. And while I was knocked out on the pew, I sensed Jesus walk up right up to the pew. I didn't see him with my eyes, but I could sense him. And, I, and, 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 that's, and you know, that's exactly... What A. Allen said, he said, I didn't see him with my eyes, but I knew he was there, and he's talking to me. He said, but the room was lit up. I didn't see him with my eyes. And he walked up to the pew that I was at, and he began to talk to me. And I'll never forget it, it because, see, then you're not just praying to God. God is showing up on your behalf. And I'll never forget it. We went home. We were still in the past, and... and uh, 
we, I, we, we, were, we were in the bed, sleep, going to bed at night, going to sleep. So I'm laying there next to Sister Hogan, and all of a sudden, I wake up, and when I wake up, I'm in a, I'm in a, 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 a how can I say, like a, 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 a force field of, of, of electrical glory current. I mean, it's like, it's like you grab a hot wire, but it, it, and it's, but it was so glorious. The power of God was so strong. I woke up, and usually when I wake up, and, and if I move at all, Sister Hogan wakes up just like that. It was like she was knocked out like God had just knocked her out. And, and while the glory of the Lord is on me, and I'm laying in the bed, I felt again the Lord walk up, and he began to talk to me. He began to talk to me about the anointing. He began to talk to me. He began to tell me. He said, I've given the anointing to men and they've sold it. He began to talk to me about what it takes to maintain the anointing on your life. And if you want God to show up, let me tell you something. Jesus can be just as real in your life as he was walking the shores of Galilee, healing the sick and raising the dead and casting out devils. You don't want him to just send an answer. Tell him to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Jesus. And in that fast, Jesus came to me. Came to me twice. Twice he came to me. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know, the, I didn't know this scripture. I didn't really know. I wouldn't really study. But, but the Lord let me know is that there's, when I get ready to take you to a new level, I, ain't, I don't have to send an angel to say, I'll tell you myself. Don't get me wrong. I, I, we've had manifestations of angels, but, you know, you say, but how, my, my question is, is how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to walk in the anointing? How bad do you want to walk in the glory of God? How bad do you want the favor of God on your life all the days of your life? How thirsty are you for God? Are you willing to give up a, a dinner, a meal? Are you willing to give up a meal? Are you because we, we we've been partially fasting? Daniel fasted for 21 days eating no pleasant bread. Are you willing to modify your diet for God? Then God's going to turn everything around. Then. And there's several words there that the Lord wanted me to emphasize, and I close with this. It's out of, it's out of verse number 9 in Isaiah 58. Then. One word is break forth. How many ready to break forth? Another word in there is spring forth. How many ready to spring forth? But it didn't just say spring forth. How many ready to spring forth speedily? In other words, you're going to spring forth fast. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm exciting myself with this message. If you ain't happy, I'm happy. And then it says, and the glory of the Lord. Somebody say, the glory of the Lord. You're going to break forth, spring forth speedily, and the glory of the Lord is going to rest upon you. And then he says, and you'll call, and God will answer. You'll have answered prayer. And you'll cry, and the Lord will say, here I am. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. We're not fasting for naught. Not fasting to show off. Well, you can be a little fast. No, that's not it. There's some things that God wants to do for you that can't be done in the flesh. Can't be done by human strength. It's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. And sometimes you have to let your flesh die so the Spirit can 
The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you got to weaken your flesh so your spirit can be stronger. God wants to move in the lives of his people. We'll be going into the, to the last seven days of the fast. We'll be here on next Friday, next Saturday. Of course, we'll be here Sunday. But we're going to spend the last three days coming to the house of the Lord. And I'm asking God to deal with us about everything that might be an idol in our life that might need to be, we need to be released from. I don't want us to, I, I don't want to come out of this fast the same way I went in. I don't want to come out and, and, and just say, you know, that, that I lost 10 pounds. I want to lose, don't get me wrong, I want to lose the weight, but I also want to lose the burden. I also want to lose the yoke. I also want to lose the demon. I also want to lose everything that has shackled my life. How many ready to allow God to loose them? I'm going to give you a chance. If you, if, if, if you, maybe you're struggling with some things and you're laying them on the altar. And you want me to agree with you that these things will be broken over your life. Maybe there's things in your life. Every one of us has things. No matter who you are. Because to go to the next level, many times God will, 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 will challenge you. Sometimes it ain't even sin. Sometimes people think that it's always sin. It's not always sin. It's not always sin. It becomes sin when you, when you, when you won't release it because then it becomes an idol. But many times the Lord is just asking for your time. Sometimes the Lord is asking for, for you to, 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 uh, uh, to cut ties with relationships that are unfruitful. And it, and it always is always a great sin. So if you want God to loose you, break the yoke, if you want him to, to lift, to, 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 to remove the burden, if you want him to, to let you go free and you want me to agree with you, I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay my hands on you. 